Welcome once again to another episode of Two Complete Utter Morons trying to discuss a comedy album made by amazing people that we kind of don't but do but don't know. Brought to you by that guy up there and this guy here in this box. I don't know. Don't ask questions. Just do or don't because that's not the name of this album. So with me today is the guy up there, uh, Edmund. And me, the yeah. idiot down here, Billy, this is his show. I don't know why I'm doing the intro. I'm just here to steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it saves me flopping the line. Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling, which I have managed to do every time I've been doing the intro. Any time that it's been in this format. Every time. <sighs> Without fail, I have flubbed the line. Hello and welcome to Music Geek. Even then, I, I even flub it then. Music Geekery is the name of the overall platform, channel, whatever. Twitch channel as well. It's on YouTube. It's on Instagram. Actually, it is on Instagram. I'm not even kidding. It's on Facebook. It's everywhere. It's in your pants. Whoa, no, whoa, whoa. Not. Edmund, Edmund, don't Edmund. Go don't, don't talk about pants. That's another another album entirely as well. Come on now. We're supposed to be talking about <laughs> and stuff. Or, or or whatever the hell this album is. At this point, I don't even know what this album is. I'm pretty sure that... I don't even think the Psycho Stick knows about this album. Speaking of which, this episode is brought to you by Psycho Stick. Not as in they're sponsoring it, but it, it's about their album. Anyways, so today I'm wearing my Psycho, 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 psycho Stick. Psycho Stick is the stick that's covered in psychos. I'm wearing their Psycho Stick t-shirt for the Ninja Turtle variety. I have no idea what Eben's wearing because he sucks and doesn't want to show me his, his sexy sultry body of course i'm just i'm in my usual devin townsend hoodie of course you and devin townsend i swear to god get married already <laughs> i can't he was he already is that doesn't mean polygamy isn't legal where you live okay probably not i know england's pretty backwards on the idea it isn't i i, I don't think it's neither legal here nor over in Canada, so... Well, then obviously the two of you just need to move to uh, Antarctica with the penguins. <laughs> I'm just saying. This is all going to end up in the flops, I think. Keep it in, let's go. All right, so let's start talking okay. about the album and not okay, each other's so... ridiculously weird fetishes about our band. Uh, so, Psycho Stick... They've gotten into this routine of releasing an album every four years. They even make a joke on it on this album. See, I've actually um, kind of forgot it had been that long since Do. Honestly, I had forgotten. Yeah. God, it's been four years. The only years. reason I'm able to remember that it's been that long since Do is because of unfortunate personal life stuff that I'm not going to get into here. But I was... Yeah, it's probably in your best interest, Sparky, to not discuss your personal life, especially on a podcast about music. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Just roll with it. Just, just, yeah. Uh, but basically, they were touring at sort of a couple of months down after Do was released, and they were over here, so I was able to see them... And so that's how I'm able to remember, oh, this is when that was released. And I have to say, you are a lucky bastard, because the when it came down this neck of the woods, I was going to go see them, but sadly had some stuff come up from work, so I wasn't able to go see it. Very frustrating, because I was one of those things where even the wife was like, ooh, we should go, we should totally go, and then I ended up having to put it off, so I didn't get a chance to go walk up to Rob and try to buy him a beer. Lost opportunities. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I was very lucky in that I was, I've actually been able to see them twice. You bastard. Just to make you a bit more That's jealous. That's it. Okay, if anyone can, can buy me a long-range sniper rifle that can somehow really curve a bullet, <laughs> let me know. I've got one <laughs> shot I want to take, and it's not to kill Edmund here. It's just to gently wing his left knee. No, no particular reason why it's the left. Just, that's, the, that's the one I want to wing, just right there, just right along the side of the leg. That way you know. So what time stuff is... What and stuff is, it's a collection of B-sides and a few re-recordings and them just going, oh, goofy as hell. See, There's I didn't get that at all. This is a completely serious album. <laughs> I don't understand where you're getting that at all. I mean, the full word by, by Sir Patrick Stewart was an incredibly rational and well-thought-out argument about whether or not, you know, 
everyone should be allowed to buy a puppet. At least that's what I got from it. I don't understand your 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 ridiculous statement that this is a comedy album. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Okay, I can't keep a straight face, <laughs> face on that one. <laughs> no, you can't. Sir Patrick None Stewart here from the MGM Grand, Grand New TV Show. I don't know, and this is not Patrick Stewart's voice at all. In fact, I think I picked it up from a Hobbit. It's it's like if Patrick Stewart, Sean Connery, <laughs> and Ian McKellen got into a weird, you know that episode of Futurama where the Dixie Chicks <laughs> oh, got no. confused. Why it's indeed, like Minnie Penny? Come on over here and give me a Sean Connery. Ooh, I don't know what that means, and it's probably not pleasant. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but it feels so that turn of phrase does feel appropriate for Psycho <sighs> Stick how about this, we'll do rapid mm -hmm. fire for the songs, you simply name the name the song, uh, okay. I tell you whether or not it's good or not, and you tell me why and that's all I get to do is say uh, yes okay. or no and then I get to make faces at the camera okay. which will hopefully not break you <laughs> okay, well a long <laughs> well, we can do that <laughs> you're like <sighs> fine <laughs> well, what? I, because um, I, I did take, I attempted some notes for this, but here's the main problem about we're talking about a comedy album. <laughs> here's the main problem with take reviewing a comedy album. Trying to talk about the jokes takes the jokes away. This is why I'm talking about things so, that aren't even in the songs. Like, for instance, in this song is worth $50. I feel like my money was not properly spent. I didn't get a single hood chihuahua. <laughs> I expected a chihuahua for my 50 bucks. I feel very, very offended. In fact, I expected to go to Mexico into the particular area of Chihuahua and get to experience it. But the band did not provide. And I, I demand my money back. Alright, so, okay, so he... So, Doing the notes. I am doing as big air quotes as I possibly can with the notes because I barely wrote anything. This is going to be very rapid fire, just me sort of like, this is, this is what's there. Take it or leave it. I mean, there's 30 tracks on the album, yes. so. Yeah, no, it's, it's got a lot of tracks. Most are really tiny, like genuinely, you know, like no jokes yeah. aside. Most are really small. I mean, they're not meant to be super long. There are a couple of genuinely long, like five minute songs. But for the most mm. part, really is just like a, oh, we had a funny idea. Let's do 30 seconds or a minute of this goofy idea, whether it's a song or a skit or the case may be. So. Yeah. Um, but how I've broken it down. So I front loaded the various shorts and the skits okay. so we can go over those and then i've listed the um ones that are sort of more outright songs for okay. them yeah that's fine i'll try i'll try to be serious um, for a few minutes and i'll go back to being you know goofy <clears throat> me again yeah all right so the opening is a foreword from patrick stewart that's my incredibly <laughs> awful accent earlier yes yeah, and it is, and they openly go. This is a foreword from a Patrick Stewart impersonator. How dare you! I'm <laughs> yes. Oh God. Yeah, and I mean to be fair, he wasn't the worst one. Like he was better than me by quite a bit. You know, he didn't pull like a weird <laughs> Ian McKellen, like "You shall not pass." Like he didn't quite do that, or like "Oh yes, indeed, many penny." Because apparently, to me, all British and Scottish people all sound the same. I don't know how that works with my my mouth. My brain hears something completely different, but my mouth just releases nightmare fuel. Um, but no, like it's genuinely, it sounds reasonably close. Like you can tell it's not him, yeah. but it's it's you know not bad. It's not bad. And the jokes yeah, are good. And, and it's a decent, yeah, it's a decent sort of, we, this isn't an actual album, this is just a, we have some things that we haven't released, we have some things that we have released, have a go at all and of it's, them. And it's fine, you know, it's got some good, good giggles in there, and you no, know, yeah, it definitely sets the stage. It lets you know that you got what you paid for. Because I don't even think this was full price for yeah. them, right? This was a, a bit cheaper than their other stuff, nah. too. So, 
Yeah. Yeah, it was like eight quid for me. So. Yeah, definitely worth a purchase. I mean, I'll, I'll say it up front. I yeah. enjoyed the album. It was a lot of fun. Some of the stuff is available on their YouTube mm. channel anyways if you just wanted to listen to some of the more proper songs. But overall, this was... This was a worthwhile purchase. Like, I genuinely feel guilty that I may or may not have borrowed Edmund's copy. I will probably be borrowing my own copy when we get done with this review, because it's worth supporting the band. If you don't buy their merchandise, that is. <laughs> I could go grab the rest of my shirts, but that would take a while. Go into... This song is worth $50, which is just them completely fucking around. I have to say, their, their they, bold they choice just... of instrumental is... Bold. That's that's the safe <laughs> word to use here is bold. <laughs> yeah, it's so bold I almost felt my fabric softener awaken. <laughs> that was not a joke I expected to hear today. I didn't realize you used fabric softener. I always felt that you were a rugged kind of man. But no, it's 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 a song? It's, 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 it is definitely easy to phrase it as music was performed. <laughs> Although, and in all seriousness, I do mean this genuinely too psycho stick to everyone listening for as deliberately I... So it's got to be said, it's deliberately made to sound bad. Yes. Oh yeah, no, it is. For as deliberate as that is, I have still managed to hear worse. From people who were not joke bands. Uh, I, I already know where this is going. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's this one band. I can't remember the actual name of it. I'm glad I can't because I'd probably try to go in search of it. Just don't, just to don't, it don't. Up. Leave it. Leave the poor people at home, um, you know, free of the misery that you and I have been been forced to experience. <laughs> I still remember but, you track but, three. It's, oh, oh no! It's oh yeah, I know. Us. I know. Far I know. Us. I know. I know. Uh, but there, there is like this Japanese. Oh, band I know exactly that, what you're talking about. And you can stop right. So the next mini song. <laughs> the, the next mini song again. It's a piss take again. Headstrong. Oh, oh, oh! I was gonna say Ghostbuster was actually kind of good, but okay, Headstrong. As a guy who actually does like trap, like I mentioned this earlier to Edmund, and he wasn't sure if I was serious or not. I actually like trapped. So when I heard that. It's it's a fair it's a fair reinterpretation. I'm not saying that Headstrong itself is an amazing masterpiece of the song because it's incredibly repetitive. It's, there's not a lot going on. So their version of her is it's fair. It, it's fair, and it made me giggle a bunch as I was like, "Hey, that's not fair." And then back in the back of my brain, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's fair. Yeah, okay, you you guys win. That would, that's a fair fair reaction. I'll, I'll give you that." <laughs> yeah, and of course, the, here's the thing. My only experience with Trapped is post memes of Trapped. Okay, okay, so... yeah. No, they were, uh, you know, all joking aside, Trapped was really big back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Hmm. And I mean, they were, yeah. they were pretty good in like the emo scene, kind of like early emo scene, like good proper early emo scene so they were good and so that's why like i can go back and listen to like headstrong and i can kind of get that like headstrong to take you. whoa was i lose my headphones don't mind me you know I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll bob my head which is obviously quite safe when i'm driving and you know have a good time mm. and i can play it even for passengers because i you know i drive basically for lyft and uber i'll have passengers who will like listen along and be like oh i haven't heard that song in forever brah you know we'll have a good time but you know, it's 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 still kind of one of those like I wouldn't say guilty pleasure because I definitely don't feel guilty about it, but it's it's an old like an old staple, a very comfortable old staple from like mm. that genre of music in the time. So when I heard them, you know, meme the hell out of it with some pretty <laughs> stuff, it was uh, it was a good moment. It was like ah, okay, I can I can dig that. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> After that, we've got one of their another of their skits. So gaslight projection. <laughs> Poor Rob. <laughs> I'm in the band. Somehow got a I'm in the band. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, it's dumb. It's an incredibly dumb skit. 
And if you know if you know anything about the band, it makes it funnier. If you have no idea who these clowns are, yeah. it's gonna go way over your head, which is fine. You know, if you're if you're not a fan mm. of Psycho Stick and bought this album, I'm sorry, because a lot of this isn't gonna make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. It's, There's a lot of inside jokes involved like, and things like that. Yeah. But just, the whole <laughs> you've somehow got a dumber since the last album. How is that even possible? Very true. Very true. Funny if you know if you. It's funny if you yeah. know the guys, or at least know about the guys. Not funny at all if you have no yeah. idea who these guys are. Like, so. If you've caught any of their um, when they've done their streams of their, their live show streams, yeah. you get the feeling that they they all just they love taking the piss out of each other and just. Which speaking of which, if you have a chance. Definitely watch those live streams. If you don't know those, don't know uh, Psycho Stick does stream at least like what at least once a week, uh, where they do yeah. like a concert. Basically, they've got they have like a large sound studio that they've kind of built more or less out of like, like an old old like warehouse, and so they mm. host a lot of like concerts and stuff out of there. There's some like auxiliary characters, so like you got you know like Marv and stuff who come in and not Marv having a brain fart. Murph. Murph, thank you. So, like, they got a bunch of people who kind of help them set things up, and, like, they're, they have their, like, own Psycho Stick lore and stuff, and there's, <laughs> you know, a lot of references that will pop up. You'll be like, what the fuck does that mean? But otherwise, you know, a lot of great moments that'll make you kind of giggle, because there's a lot of outtake moments where they fuck up the song, and they just play it <laughs> yeah. off. They play around, yeah. of course, with the audience, too, because, you know, they, they pay attention to live chat, and they respond to live mm. chat, sometimes in the song, which can be quite entertaining, <laughs> especially. So, yeah. yeah, if you haven't yeah. watched them, guys, who are somehow watching this but haven't watched them, definitely go check mm. them out, because they're, they're, worth, they're worth watching, you know. After that, the mini-songs, there's a string of three, and there's a reason I'm mentioning them as a string of three, because when I saw, saw them the second time, what they were doing was um, they'd have people pick songs out of a bucket. Oh, and, I see where you're going with this. Okay. And when I picked the song out of the bucket, it was the string of these three covers of the Bill Nye, the science guy theme. Bill Nye, the science guy. Boo, 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 boo. Reading Rainbow. Which I have to say is probably the best cover I've genuinely heard. It's really good, yeah. actually. <laughs> All yeah. joking aside, it's really good. Yeah, so. I mean, genuinely, I actually quite grouped to it, weirdly. And the Doom song. Doomy, doomy, doomy. From Invader Zim. And I'm going to... I'm going to say this again, all joking aside, if you're just in a very fed up mood or just in a, I need some energy, singing along to their cover of the Doom song, it's actually really cathartic. It's just... As somebody who just, watched a lot of Invader Zim, hmm. it's perfect. It's genuinely yeah. perfect. Like, they I, got the Gur vibe pretty down with, like, if Gur was super into metal, it's perfect. Yeah. Like, like me and my mate, um, we have a weekly sort of cartoon watching day kind of deal, and uh, we we went through the entirety of Invader Sim in a couple of weeks, and it's just yeah, this it's, is absolutely it's an experience, perfect. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So. After the Doom song, we have another um, Patrick Stewart impersonation. Of Star Trek SG forty five hundred and sixteen, or something to that effect. Basically, they they tell Patrick Stewart or the fake version of Patrick Patrick Stewart that he is replaceable with another person from Fiverr, letting people know that that's where they hired the first one from, supposedly. <laughs> and so there becomes this like threatening thing to him. So he basically tells him to fuck off, and then they just play the theme song to Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, and it's not bad. Yeah. Again, it's a genuinely a quite decent cover. Yeah, so there you go. Apparently, all you have to do to get these guys to play theme songs is bring them up, and then they'll just do it. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, I demand the theme song from Ren and Stippy. That's that's what I demand. I that's the, that's what I want to hear them do. Not because it's anything impressive, but just because at this point they've done everything else. So why not bring up Ren and Stippy? Powerpuff Girls. Ah, eh, fine. Oh, I, I'm just thinking all those cartoon cartoons, <laughs> kind of, you know, Ed, Ed and Eddie. Oh, uh, God. 
The Yogi Bear Show from the 1950s. Come on, let's do some old stuff. Okay, bewitched. No. (laughs) I dream of Genie. No, I said no, damn it, sir. And I said no. Today, sir. I'm great. Good day, sir. Not today. I've got my phrases wrong as I spit all over myself. The Andy Griffith Show. Okay, I'd listen to that. I'll leave it to Beaver either way. Eh, well, let's go to the Andy Griffith Show. That way they're whistling a lot. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah. You could use a kazoo instead, you know, for the Psycho Six style. All right, let's stop spitballing things that they're never going to do. Yeah. And let's move on to the next one. Oh, you never know. They might do it. They, I mean, Rob watched the last episode. If he ends up watching this one. Just... By the way, Rob, I'm sorry for the pictures I sent years ago. You probably, hopefully, don't remember it. If you do, I'm sorry. And say sorry to Alex and and, and the boys. I wasn't drunk, but I wasn't sober. We'll go that far. Actually, that anyway. sounds much worse than it really was. Ooh. Yeah, just a tad. Anyway, um, after that, we have uh, their cover of the Angry Video Game Nerd theme. Which, which uh, I don't really care. I'm not a huge AVGN yeah. nerd anyways, but... Eh. I, I mean, I'm a fan of AVGN, but less so in more recent times. And just never been my cup of tea. It was okay. Uh, it, it was a it was decent forty eight seconds. Yeah, it it, it it kind of passes you by and just. And I mean, I know that they're like kind of friends because of what they did with uh, um, one of the tracks on on Do because he was their yeah he was basically the guy who did their their music video for it. So that was yeah because yeah. it was what Blockbuster I think it was or whatever the yeah. name of the song was yeah. So I I see why they did this and it's it's fine you know it's just. Not my cup of tea. That's perfectly fine. Don't have to like everything. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next one comes try. from a video game. Oh and well, I, wait. Oh, you're gonna. Okay, sorry, no, just wait. We've got three more skits to go over, or three more shorts, whatever. Ah, okay. Um, so you've got that talk about not talking about food skits. <laughs> Which, to be fair. <laughs> Somehow, up to this point, they have been successful at fa- at failing to do something, which is usually the thing they do, which is do lots of songs about food, because apparently they're American, and as an American, you have to talk about food. It's a requirement. I'm t- I don't care if you're from another country. You'll completely not understand this, but Americans, if you can't tell by the size of me, we love our food. So, of course, they sing about food because, well, they're like me, only a lot skinnier because, you know, they're not well, insane. Well, let's face it. How many songs did Weird Al have about food? That's my point. At the start of his career. That's my point. We love our food. We love our food. That's why everything is triple supersized. Including my nose. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But yeah, talk about not talking about food. It's just them spitballing how they can continue not talking about food. Which they instantly fail at in the next song (laughs) in the album. Yeah, um, the short, which um, you've got the next song and a short immediately after that. That so I'll wait until we get to the songs proper to talk about that one. Yeah, because um, the next next short would be what a reverse forward. Uh, yes, a reverse forward forward from Patrick. At which point becomes a duel between two Patrick Stewarts. They duel like crazy and it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. At one point a lightsaber gets brought up because apparently they forget, the other Patrick Stewart forgets it's not Star Wars <laughs> the Star Trek. It's it's ridiculous. It's goofy. It's zany. It, what do you expect? Yeah. It's psycho stick. Come on. It, I mean I just have to wonder I, it must have been Rob and um Josh, who are doing the two different Patrick Stewarts. It's actually quite possible, because I don't think they actually buy and pay for anybody on Fiverr, because, I mean, they're both pretty good voice, voice just in general. they got decent voices, so yeah. I could see them doing it. And if it, if it wasn't them, and they actually did hire two guys on Fiverr, I feel bad for the guys on Fiverr, because they're like, you want me to do what? <laughs> I mean, at least the script is in, in like coherent words, but What? <laughs> Because I've done Fiverr work, and the scripts you get are usually 
beyond broken English would oh, be a way to phrase it. it. Yeah, right. So you have to translate all of your all of the words and try to understand what the hell they meant to say. So yeah, I can I can attest those experiences can be quite unpleasant. Yeah, like but... I remember uh, I did a bit of work on Fiverr because I needed a bit of extra cash at uni. I did some proofreading for some people, and it was one of those. Oh dear God, what am I reading through? Join us in part two of more of whatever the hell this is.